Hey everybody, I thought it'd be kind of neat today to do a Kirchhoff's voltage law type of problem. Uh, just to refresh your memory, Kirchhoff's voltage law is expressed this way mathematically and what all this means is that the sum of all the voltages around a loop within a circuit is zero. So here's a sample circuit and this circuit has three elements to it and if you can, if you notice, it's configured so that there is a loop. There's only one loop within the circuit. Uh, and the question I want you to try to solve is the voltage across that resistor. Now, remember the law. The sum of all voltages around the loop is zero. And I'm going to define the loop going in this direction. It's arbitrary. You can define the loop going that direction. It doesn't matter. It'll still help you solve. Uh, for the missing voltage. But let's say we're going to define the loop as going in that direction. So we need to sum up all the voltages and they all have to equal to zero when summed. So as we go through the loop that way, positive to minus, so that's the dir correct direction uh, for current flow. So that's going to be 8 volts. 8 volts going here and as we continue down the loop, well, what's the voltage drop across VR? We don't know, but we're going to say, just arbitrarily, that it's going to be a voltage drop going this way, so we could add VR. If you we were going to say that the potential was going from here to there, where this is the high potential, and the drop was going that way, then this would be a minus VR, because we're summing along the loop. Now how about here? Well that's a 20 volt source, but notice the polarity. Current is going, the loop's direction is going this way through it, but the voltage is actually, 20 volts is actually going from here to here, down this way. So that means we have to consider that as a loss, 20 volts. And if we add up all the voltages around the loop, that has to equal to zero. So now we can do some algebra here. We're going to leave VR by itself, which means taking the 20 to the other side of the equation and taking the 8 to the other side of the equation. And we're left with VR, this voltage drop across that resistor equals 12 volts. Now, what does it mean that it's a positive voltage? Well, it means that the way we labeled this was just fine. That the drop really is from here to here. The potential is from here to here. So this is actually, this really is 20 volts across here. If you took an ohmmeter, measured it from here to here, the drop is 20 volts. Uh, let's do something that's a little more complicated. Let's say we had a same circuit, um, but let's say we're missing some stuff. So let's say we have our 20 volt source again, and we have our voltage here. And, oops, I'm sorry, and our resistor there, and another resistor there. Um, and let me give you the resistance, let's say R, yeah, that's fine, R1 equals 2 ohms, but let's say I don't give this to you, let's say I don't tell you what that voltage is across there, so that's going to be an unknown, and let's say this second resistor has a resistance of 3 ohms, and we don't know what that voltage is, okay, so now we have two unknowns here, and we can use the same principle, we can still use KVL to solve for that. Now I'm arbitrarily defining the loop as going this way again, just so that uh, you can follow me as I walk through it. So if our loop's going this way, let's go ahead and sum up all the voltages. So V1, and again, we're arbitrarily defining uh, how we're looking at the polarity. So we're going to pretend or assume that the voltage drop is from here to here. So V1, and as we're going through the loop, another drop from here to here. Again, we just arbitrarily assign that. Going around the loop. Ah, this is again going from minus to positive, so we're not going to add that voltage, we have to subtract it. And we know that equals to zero. Now if we're wrong about our voltages, if the the drop is actually going this direction, the high potential here and the low potential there, then our V1 is going to end up to be negative when we solve for it. So we can always go back later to figure out what's what. But here's our equation, 
and we have two variables. So what you want to do is write down all the relationships you can within the circuit that you know about, and hopefully one of those relationships or more than one of those relationships can help you solve for either of those guys. So let's say we know Ohm's law. Well, can we apply it anywhere here? Sure we can. We know that the current, let's use the color here, we know the current that's flowing through here is the same current that's flowing through here, which is the same current that's flowing through here, okay? Same current all around, so let's just call that current I. And we know based off Ohm's law that V, whatever V1 is, has to equal IR, so I times that resistance. But we also know that V, V2 here, has to also equal IR. Current's the same, because this is a closed loop, there's nowhere else for the current to go. And then times this resistance, which is 3 ohms. Huh. So now we solve for V1 and V2, and we only have one variable now. So we can put it back into our Kirchhoff's equation that we just set up, that loop equation. Right? We know that based off KVL, V1 plus V2 minus 20 volts has to equal to zero. And we know V1 is I times two, and V2 is I times three, and then minus our 20 volts, and that equals zero. Well, that's, that's now manageable. I hope we can see that still. Because we have one variable, and we have one equation, so fantastic. So let's do some, some simple math here. So this is 3i, and that's 2i. When you add together, that's 5i. Let me make sure I center that for you guys. And now we can move the 20 volts to the other side. That V looks confusing. I should have gotten rid of that for you. Sorry. Move the 20 to the other side. So I, 5i equals 20. So there's some basic math here. Do some algebra, take the 5, divide it by both sides, Five equal, uh, i equals 20 divided by 5, which is just, oops, and running out of paper, you can't really see that, which equals 4, and don't forget the units, amps. So now we know that the total current going through our circuit is 4 amps, and now we can just plug that back into our equations for V1, V2. So 4 times 2, equals 8 volts, since we're talking about voltage. And then our I is 4 times 3, which is equal to 12 volts. Aha! Now we solve for all the voltages across here. V1, the drop is a positive 8 volts, so we did label the polarity correctly. 8 volts is going from uh, higher potential to lower potential that way. V2 is 12 volts, which it's positive, which means that we did label this correctly. It is going from a high potential up here to a lower potential down there. And now we have no more unknowns, and we're good. You just ace the test if you solve that correctly. Now, hopefully, you can see this messy part down here, and, uh, and hopefully, it helps you with any tests or exams or fun stuff you plan to do with circuits and Kirchhoff's voltage law.